In Creole Parametric, you can use the surface tool within style in order to create a variety of different surfaces. Let's take a look at how to do that. First, let me orient you to my model. In an earlier video on middle out design, I showed how you could locate components, then create a skeleton and then shrink wrap the components that were already placed. Here I have a style feature located after the shrink wrap that contains a number of curves I already created. Let's use edit definition to get back to the style environment. If you take a look at the style tree over on the left, you can see that I already have a number of different planar and three dimensional curves. Right now you can see my active plane. Let's go to the preferences to turn the display off just to reduce the screen clutter and I'll click the OK button to close the dialog box. So one of the ways that you can create a surface within style is by using boundaries and you can use three boundaries, four boundaries or n boundaries. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to right mouse click and hold and then let's go to the surface tool. You can also get to that right from the ribbon and then to create my three boundary surface, I will start by selecting one curve and then I will hold down the control key and select a second curve. And let me go to the references tab just to show you that here we have our primary chain references. Then I will hold down the control key and select a third curve. And you'll notice that this third curve extends beyond the limits of the first curve. But in ISDX, it will automatically terminate at the intersections. So that's good for this first surface. To complete the feature, you can use the green check mark in the dashboard or the middle mouse button. And so there we have the first surface. You'll notice that the surface quality is not great. For that reason, I do not use three-sided surfaces a lot. In a future video, I'm going to improve the quality of this surface by defining some additional internal curves using something called a radial path planar curve. So that's good for one surface, 3D screen clutter. Let me select it and then use the hide tool. Now let's take a look at creating a surface from four boundaries. So once again, I will use the right mouse button to get to the surface tool. And then for the four references, let me start off by selecting one curve over here. And so there you can see how it's indicated. I'm going to use the shift key to build up this chain. So right now I have a one by one chain. I will hold down the shift key. I will select this other chain and we're going to end up getting a composite curve. So there is my first chain. Now I will hold down the control key and grab another curve. And this will be my second curve in the chain. You also notice that this technique is a little different than when you create a boundary blend. When you create a boundary blend, you're picking curves in one and two directions. Here we are just going around creating the boundaries. Let me hold down the control key and select a third curve. And once again, I will use the shift key to add another curve to the third chain. And then to complete the four boundary surface, let's hold down the control key and select our fourth chain. And here you can see the four boundary surface that would be created. Let's use the check mark or the middle mouse button to complete this particular surface. And so there you see this one. Once again, just to reduce my screen clutter, I'm gonna hide this particular surface. I'm gonna create another surface over there in a moment. For the next surface, I'm going to create an end-sided surface. I want to fill in this back area over here with a bunch of different curves. So once again, let's activate the surface tool. Let's select one curve and let's go back to the references tab. Here's my first chain. I'm going to then hold down the control key and select another curve. So there I have my second chain. This is pretty much a straight line. Since this next adjacent curve is also a straight line, if I wanted to, I could use the shift key to build up the second chain. And then let's use the control key to select a third chain and control again to select a fourth chain and then control to select our fifth and final chain. And there we have our end-sided surface. Let me hit the check mark to complete the feature. 
All right, once again, I am going to hide the surface just so I can show you some of the other different ways in which we can create curves. Now, I create one surface over here using a four boundary surface. I'm going to create a surface there using a different method by having essentially what would amount to a sweep in standard mode. Let's select a curve to use as a curve for our main one. Oops, I forgot to start the surface tool. Let's start the surface tool. And now I will select this curve in the model. And once again, I am going to actually let me just select this one. And then I'm going to hold down the control key and select this other curve. And so it's going to initially create sort of like a one sided boundary bend blend or a loft between them. You can also now right mouse click and hold and activate a cross curve collector. And then I can select this curve that will go between those two particular curves in between there. So again, this is sort of like a variable section sweep in that case where I have this one curve going between those two surfaces. You can see because the curve here is curved, we also have it curved down here at the bottom. Let me go to my references tab and here's the cross chain collector. I want you to take a look at what happens right over here if I remove that cross curve. So again, by no longer having a cross curve, you see how it goes straight across over here. Once again, with the cross collector active, I can add in this other curve and it's going to end up changing the topology of the surface. So let's complete that surface over there and deselect and for the last surface let me select this one and then hide it once more now let's take a look at doing a loft surface let's create a brand new surface and i will select my first curve then let's hold down the shift key to build up this chain let me show you the references tab so this is our first chain in the curve let's now hold down the control key and select another curve and you can see this looks really, really weird. Let's build up the second chain by using the shift key to make a one by one chain. There, that looks a lot better. And now let's hold down the control key again to select a third curve. Once again, it looks terrible the way that it's inflecting. Let's use the shift key to build up the one by one chain. And now I have my loft surface between those three different chains of curves. One thing I also want to point out is that on the boundaries, you will often see an arrow that indicates the boundary conditions. And right now, this is having tangent continuity. If I right click over, you can see some of the different choices where we have, where you could change this to positional continuity, tangent, or curvature. So again, you'll see those on a variety of the different borders so for example here we have the same thing over on this border in this particular case i can change from g0 continuity to normal continuity or this draft choice where you could specify the minimum angle of draft in case this was a surface that was going to be molded or cast so let's hit the check mark to complete this particular surface and so in this way, I use the same surface tool to create a variety of different surfaces, including three-sided surfaces, four-sided surfaces, n-sided surfaces, surfaces with cross curves, and also loft surfaces. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.